So, plantar fasciitis, plantar fasciopathy, plantar heel pain, whatever you want to call it, we know it's a tricky condition to treat. So in this episode, we're going to dive into all the best ways to manage this for your patients in practice. If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So plantar fasciitis is a hot topic. We know it's a really sticky condition where patients can find that it's difficult to treat. We know that after a year, only 50% of patients have fully recovered from plantar fasciitis. So we need to get the treatment options correct. So I know what you're thinking, is there a magic one treatment option for plantar fasciitis? Well, there are various evidence-based options that are available, and we're going to break these down step by step for you in this video. So stick around, watch till the end so we demystify everything for you, so we can help you put your best foot forward, quite literally. So let's dive straight into it with the research. And what I have for you today is the latest, the most comprehensive, the best available evidence we have for plantar fasciitis. And that is the best practice guide from Morrissey et al. in 2021. Now this brilliant research group developed a best practice guide. And this means that they developed a piece of research that combined patient values, experience of clinicians, and the best available evidence to draw its conclusions on the treatment options for this condition. So let me bring you the highlights. The best three treatment options suggested as the core approach for treating plantar fasciitis revolves around stretching exercises, taping of the foot, and education for patients. And what we know from Morrissey et al is that rather than using one or two of those options, we need to combine all three of those options as the core approach to get the best results for our patients. So let's talk about each of those options, starting with stretching. And the first thing to say is that this is not calf stretching. This is specific plantar fascia stretching. And the way I would do this is as you can see here on the screen, where we cup the heel, we cup the toes, particularly the first toe, and we pull the two apart in order to stretch that plantar fascia. Now, this needs to be done on a daily basis, and it's crucially important that patients know how to do it. Now, whilst the best practice guide didn't give us an exact frequency for reps and sets, what I like to tend to suggest is 30 to 60 seconds of this stretch on the affected foot regularly regularly through the day, particularly first thing in the morning before the patient gets out of bed because that's a really irritable time when patients have plantar fasciitis. So the second option within this core approach taping and in particular a form of taping called low dye taping. This should be done by the patient every day for four to six weeks and so therefore educating the patient on how to do the taping is of course vital. So as you can see here this is low dye taping and the way that we do this if I could take you through it just briefly is in figures one to three wrap a piece of tape around the posterior ankle from the medial side to the lateral side. Then in figure six and seven we do individual tapes underneath the foot and you can see the order one, two, three, four, which represents the order in which you should place these pieces of tape. And then finally, from figures eight to 10, we basically want to provide some extra anchors to solidify that taping that we've created. And so that's low dye taping done by the patient every day for four to six weeks. Next, education. What are the key things to explain to the patient to make sure they can manage their condition correctly? So, one of the first ones is about footwear advice, to ensure that the patient is wearing comfortable shoes, particularly if it offers a small rear foot to forefoot drop, meaning that the patient strikes with less of their heel when they walk. Next, load management. This is vital to ensuring that the patient breaks up their activities on their feet and reduces the amount that they are doing to a manageable pain level. Speaking of pain levels, this one naturally goes hand in hand with load management, explaining to the patient that this is not a case of no pain, no gain, and to educate them on self-monitoring how much pain is generated by different activities, and thus to moderate how much of those activities they do to make it more comfortable for their foot. Next, weight loss. It was established that patients with a higher BMI are more likely to develop plantar fasciitis, and therefore educating on strategies to reduce weight was important. And finally, expectations on recovery, explaining to the patient that it can be a long road ahead and so ensuring that they understand that persistence is key. So one question you might be asking is, 
What about strengthening exercises? You may have heard about doing heel raises, particularly with a rolled up towel underneath the toe in order to help plantar fasciitis in the early stages. This came about through previous research from Rath Lefetal in 2014. However, when we dive into this particular study, which only involved 48 patients, we can see that they followed up the periods of time after doing the exercises to see if patients were making improvement. This particular study highlighted that after one month, there wasn't a significant improvement in symptoms. After three months, there was an improvement in symptoms. However, at six months and 12 months, there wasn't an improvement in symptoms, highlighting that overall, there may have only been a minimal effect when patients use these kind of exercises. Then we have this systematic review from Huffer et al. in 2017, which aimed to really establish, do strengthening exercises help patients with plantar fasciitis? They looked at seven different studies, including the one we just mentioned from Ratleff et al. And unfortunately, they came to similar conclusions that really there's no evidence to suggest that strengthening exercises do help patients with plantar fasciitis. And naturally, strengthening exercises didn't feature in Morrissey et al.'s review in 2021. And guess who was part of the research group? The brilliant Michael Rathliff. And that just goes to show me that perhaps it isn't a frontline treatment option for patients with plantar fasciitis. If I've used it in the past, I think I've found that it just irritates a patient's heel even further. So personally, I don't use strengthening exercises anymore for plantar fasciitis in the early stages, but I might use it further down the line once all their symptoms have settled to make sure that they improve their strength for the future. So a couple of extra treatment options found in Morrissey et al's best practice guide, starting with shockwave therapy. This treatment option is gaining real popularity in physiotherapy, and there's plenty of evidence that supports its use for plantar fasciitis as well. So this is certainly something that can be utilized if that core approach of stretching, taping, and education isn't heeding the results that you want with your patient. Definitely use it on your list. And the team established that if shockwave therapy doesn't help the symptoms after the core approach of stretching, taping, and education, custom orthoses can also be a useful option to help patients. So ultimately, we start with stretching, taping, and education. If things don't go in the right direction with that, we think about shockwave therapy. And if shockwave therapy doesn't do the trick, we think about custom orthoses as well. There is a really great summary for what we do with patients with plantar fasciitis. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. Remember, we've got loads of resources on our Instagram channel at Clinical Physio, and we've got brilliant resources for physiotherapists on our membership website, member.clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.